What's going on and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to talk about XML or extensible markup language and the external entity injection attack that are conducted on vulnerable web applications. So what do we mean when we, when we say we have a vulnerable um, XML code, right, under the, or underlying XML code for the web application? When it's vulnerable, it means that we can execute system commands to read files on the system, right? That's how we conduct external entity injection attacks. We have, for example, in the example right here, we have uh, a box, an input area. It could be a box, it could be search. Any input area in any web page is a playground for testing. So in this scenario, we're gonna test against XML external entity injection. I'm not going to say all the time external entity injection. It's a very long word, just to, you, to get what I'm talking about. So basically, this injection, to understand how to conduct and test for this injection, we're going to first understand and explain how this works. So basically, before we dive in, this is part of CompTIA Pentest Plus Pathway in Try Hack Me, um, and the area of focus is OWASP Top 10. So previously, we have done command injection, broken authentication, sensitive data exposure. Then we're going to do XML external entity injection. Okay. So let's first look about how it works, and then we're going to dive in. So line by line, the first line, as you can see, it defines the version and the encoding. And it is called the XML prolog, right? So this is the... Um, demonstration of this one. So next, as you can see, we have doc type replace entity name feast. So I'm going to make a few correction here, which is instead of replace, I'm going to type mail. I'm going to explain why. And here I will type something like name I'm going to put and, I'm going to look for the just a second. All right, and here, type name. Yep, and close the entity. Okay, right, like that. Okay, let's explain how this works. So we define the version, we define the encoding. The next one here, when we say doc type, we are defining the root element. The root element in this case is mail. Every XML document contains a root element. The root element in our case is mail. It starts with mail and ends with slash mail. This is the root element. And these are the children elements. This is the rule for XML. Okay, so an XML document cannot be started or cannot be written without the root element. So how do we define this? We, we say doc type mail, the root element is mail, and we define an entity here, like, right? And the entity is name, its value is feast, okay? Next, we start our XML document. So we have the root element mail, to, from, subject, text, name. Now when I say and name, takes the value of the entity, which is name, from the definition here, which is feast. That's in a simple words how it works. Okay. Now, when it comes to exploiting XML, what we need to do, we need to, or we can actually here, define an entity right here. Or we can manipulate an entity actually. So, for example, suppose that a document here, um, as you can see, it is an input, right? So there is an XML document that handles, as you can see, XML is a type, it's a markup language that sets the rules of transporting and uh, encoding the documents. So any web page has an XML document, okay? So when we input, when we take this and put it here, right, it's gonna do something. So for example, if I take this, copy that and paste it here, what's going to happen? Nothing, right? Why? 
because this one doesn't execute or read any system commands, read any file on the system that would incur, uh, that would uh, ensue an output be displayed on the page. So there is no any command here that um, it sends an input to the user, to the system, and so that the system needs to do something on the output. Okay, so what do we do here, for example? One way to do that is to use the system command. So, for example, here I can replace this one, uh, entity name. Okay, so if I remove this, okay, name the entity to be, or keep it name, all right, and here, if I want to make the entity reads twice on the systems, the value should be a command. Okay, so the command could be the command starts with system, mm -hmm. and then we type code. If we want to read the file, we type file etc fast wd. Right, that's how it works. So when we pass the, here we forgot to put semicolon actually. All right. So when we parse this XML, it's going to read the content of the etc password file. So for in order to do that, we're going to need to launch Purpose Suite, which is which I have already launched that. And let's go to the browser, make the interceptors on, and type something like one. So this is the XXE here. This is the place where we need to put our payload. Let's go back. And take this. So here, like that, forward. Okay, fine. Let's go back to see why it didn't do anything. So basically here, this one, we should remove that. Okay, we'll keep it. All right. So here, the XML version. I'm going to cancel the encoding here. Dog type mail entity. Oh, the one we actually, uh, I have actually, I've made this. Well, Okay, 1.0, doc type mail, entity, um, here it's, okay, name, system file, etc, password. Right, so here, let me cancel this one, and I'm gonna cancel all of the lines above this. Let's make it one entity. So here it's going to be mail, right? And I'm going to take this one. All right, slash mail. Okay. Oh, so this is the content of the password file. As you can see, we are able to execute or to read files on the system. So if you go back to the code here, understand what happened. 
So basically, I defined the element. Okay, you need to, and this is the payload you can use. Okay, you can take it, paste it, try it. Uh, but first, you understand the rules. So basically, if I haven't defined the doc type, the payload wouldn't have worked. Why? Because this one would be not recognized. And to define the root element, the name of it, and use it. In our case, this one didn't work because I defined the root element here, okay, and then I didn't use the entity name inside of it. That's my interpretation. I'm not, I'm not an expert in XML, and that's my interpretation of that. So what can we do further? We can go back and read, let's say, for example, we want to get a shell on the system. Since we can only read files, uh, we're going to need to read the contents of the private key of the user. In, able, in order to do that, first let's identify the user on the system. So here the user is Falcon. Most probably, if we want to read the private key, the path of the private key will be something like here, um, say for example, home Falcon. SH ID RSA. So now let's try this one. Take the payload. Okay, forward. So this is the private key. You can take this and let's try to log it. So we can attempt to take this private key and log in now. Pseudo nano ID RSA. Paste the key. Permissions. And log in. the IP. Let's go up, take the IP. And we are logged in as Falcon. So that was about this challenge. ID uh, who or sudo dash i. Well, we don't know the password. Again, this is good actually that we can't sudo without inputting the password. Okay, that was it for the answers of the challenge. So the answers, as you can see, what's the name of the user? It is Falcon. Where is the where is Falcon's SSH key located? This one. What are the first 18 characters for Falcon's private key? Self-explanatory. It doesn't need a video to how to copy the eight characters. That's it. All right. So that was it. And see you in the next video.